Raptor fans and probably Sixer fans, because I'm going to guess there's going to be some rolling around here. The round one matchup between the Raptors and 76ers is about to begin. We've had to wait basically a week for this damn thing. And it is about to begin tomorrow night in Philly, a 6 p.m. tip-off there in game one of round one of the NBA playoffs. Raptor fans, I think coming into the season, we all didn't expect to be in this spot. Not only did we expect maybe a, maybe a play-in spot, we did not expect the fifth seed. This Raptor team has exceeded all expectations. Heck, the over-under going into the season was like, what, 36 and a half. They end the season with 48 wins. The Philadelphia 76 on the, other, on the other side, they have championship aspirations. Obviously acquiring James Harden near the trade deadline they and trading away Ben Simmons. They made that move going for it all. I wouldn't say it has fully worked out for Philly because James Harden really hasn't been James Harden. But on the Toronto Raptors front, you're the underdog. You're the team that everybody's saying, you know, this Raptor team's good, but Philly's going to win this series. We hear that all over the place. And that's fine. I'm not worried about that. Because Raptor fans, we all know what this team is capable of. But it's all about putting on the court and making it happen. So we're here to break down how the Raptors can find a way to win this series. What my expectations are for this series. And all that stuff. Let's start with game one. We obviously know Matisse Thybul will be playing in Philly. But I think he's, I think, barring any health problems with him. But he will not be playing in the games in Toronto. So games 3, 4, and game 6, if possible. Those are the games that Matisse Thibault cannot play. Otherwise, he will be in the lineup being healthy um, in every other game in Philly. Because of, obviously, the vaccination thing and all that nonsense. All right? But so I got that out of the way. Now let me talk about this. The Raptors going into this series... I mean, in years past, the Raptors have been, hey, you got to take your, you got to take this. You got, look, championship aspirations or bust. That's what the Raptors had been like before, obviously, the Tampa season. Everything else was, you know, you got to win the championship or not. And you can say the bubble may be the same type of deal as Tampa where you really no expectations. But you just won the chip in 19. And anytime before that, right, you, you had to win the championship or not. And you didn't for the most part. Then you won it in 2019. And, you know, thing, a lot of things had changed. This year is kind of that first year of that retool. I'm not going to say rebuild. It's a retool. It reminds us a lot of that 2013-14 season for the Toronto Raptors where they, they made that playoff you know, against, against the Brooklyn Nets and unfortunately lost in seven because of the block of Paul Pierce. And, and this team reminds us a lot of that because they are so young when it comes to playoff experience and you know, adversity and, and all the stuff they've been dealing with this season and with no expectations. That's what that team dealt with. And this team is very similar. They won 48 games this season. And there's no pressure on these guys. There's no pressure. If they go out in five or six games, who's going to be mad? Maybe the players. They'll be upset with themselves. But us as fans, I mean, we watch this team grow. And we're continuing to watch them grow and grow. And this playoff experience, no matter how long it is, is going to be massive for guys like Presh Chichua, for guys like Scotty Barnes. Gary Trent Jr. for that matter. All these guys who have not really been through a massive playoff run, or any playoff run for that matter, it's going to be massive for these guys. Especially being an integral part in that run. All right? Let's get to how this team is going to go about winning this, though. Because, I mean, the thing, that's, the, that's the key that we all want to talk about. Well, it all starts with rebounding and turnovers. Right? I, I think we, we can talk about specific players, and we'll get to that. But this rapper team is top... Top five in the NBA in total rebounds. They get after it on the glass. Philly, not so good. They're, I believe they're, they're in the bottom five in rebounding. So the Raptors getting second chance opportunities. We've seen it in, in previous games this year where they win 20 to five in the rebounds category, in the offensive boards. They're just destroying Philly in that sense. And that's the way this Raptor team is going to have to play if they want to win this game. Obviously turning the ball over. Philly, you know, does it quite a bit, and the Raptors force a lot of turnovers. So that's going to be another massive part because, again, we all know this Raptor team is not a very effective shooting team, but they get so many opportunities because of the offensive boards and because of the turnovers that they can find a way to get enough points up because they're taking so many shots. And that's so key to this team winning this series. And obviously, you know, 
free throw, free throw discrepancy is going to be crazy. Obviously, Philly, a very good free throw shooting team, and they get to the line the most in the NBA, obviously because of James Harden and Joel Embiid. The Raptors, we all know that free throw shooting has been a real thorn, real pain in the rear for the Toronto Raptors. They're bottom 10 in the NBA in free throw percentage because they, there are games where they shoot 95% from the line. You're like, damn, that's great. And then they shoot 64 and you're like, what? What happened? And those those type of mistakes, those free throws missed, can really bite you come playoff time. Now, obviously, we know what this team is. They're not going to all of a sudden flip a, flip a switch and not miss a free throw all series. That, that's just not going to happen. But they got to find a way to limit the, you know, two missed free throws in one possession or, you know, three of four or down the stretch in the fourth quarter missing big free throws. Like, these are the things they have to limit if they want to win this series. All right. Now let's talk about matchups because we can talk about you know that all night long, all, all the all, all you know the statistics and this and that. But in the end, you gotta find a way to contain James Harden and Joel Embiid. And the reason I use contain and not shut down is because that's what you have to do. You can't shut down Joel Embiid and James Harden. However, the Toronto Raptors have done an incredible job on both of those guys since they have been since they've been Philadelphia 76ers. James Harden shot, what, like 3 of 11 or 3 of 12 in his last eight meeting against the Raptors? Yeah, he had 15 assists, but I'm totally fine with James Harden not beating you there because he, that means he's not getting to the free throw line, and he's make, you're making other guys beat you. As for Joel Embiid, yeah, he'll get his 30 and 10. That's fine by me. But it's when he has 30, 10, and like 12 assists, that's the issue we're talking about, right? And we talked about in the last game against Philly, Raptors, yeah, they ended up shooting, he, I think Joel had like 30 and 12, which is a great stat. He shot 10 of 22, which isn't bad. However, he finished the game one of six. The Raptors have some sort of, and Joel Embiid said it, how he hates playing the Raptors because of what they throw at him. And it's going to be really interesting to see how this whole series plays up because of those two guys. Now, they do have a great supporting cast. Look, Tyrese Maxey, I said it in the last game, how that kid is phenomenal. I think he's 21 years old, and he's so explosive. When he gets hot, you he can't miss. And he torched us in that last game. I mean, he was it, the Raptors were like up by 10 at one point in the fourth quarter, and he goes like a 7-8-0 seven, 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 run on his own. Like, this kid is damn good. And if you're overhelping to Harden and Embiid, you're going to you're gonna take that chance that Maxi is going to get hot and burn you. Or take that chance that he's not going to do that. You know? But then you look at the second units, and I think this is where the problems come in for the Philadelphia 76ers. George Niang, and George Niang, uh, Shake Milton, guys like that, they may be able to shoot, but those guys can't defend to save their life. They, they honestly can't. And when I'm watching a guy like Pascal Siakam, who I'm going to flip to now, as a guy who they have nobody who can guard him. And people are going to say, well, just put Joel and beat on him. You think they haven't done that already? And this season, Pascal has averaged 38 and 8. Against Philly this season, over 50% shooting. He's been unbelievable. And yeah, well, we can talk about that last game he had against Philly. I mean, flat out dominated. Made Tobias Harris look, look awful. Look, look, made Niang and Shake Milton look terrible. And yeah, that's fine. You want to put Joel Embiid on him, that's fine. That'll free up some other guys. Right, because Joel Embiid about to guard him in space. That takes away from the rim protection. So you're giving a lot of other guys lanes to the bucket. So for Pascal... He's just got to do his thing. He's got to do exactly what he's been doing all year long against Philly and torch them because they have nobody who can guard him. Now, let's get to the big X factors in this series because we can talk about for the Toronto Raptors. Look, look there's probably a ton. Uh, obviously, Tyrese Max, I think, is a massive X factor when it comes to the Philadelphia 76ers. But I look at the Toronto Raptors and I look at two things. The health of Fred and the health of OG. Those are the two things I look at, and I'm like, if these guys are healthy, now obviously Fred didn't play in that last game. He's now had basically a full week to recover. He's been training this, I think they had a media day yesterday or the day, day before, and he says, you know, it's, it's better, but it's, you know, it is what it is. And that's fine. Like, take the time, rest it up, get ready. He's back in the gym working at it. That's fantastic. As for OG Ananobi, we saw after he came back from that the, his last injury, he like couldn't miss. You know, there were games where he went 4-4 four four from 3, and you know the defense he's going to give you, and all that stuff. If OG is healthy, that adds such a massive element to the Toronto Raptors squad. You know, and, and I, I truly believe that with a healthy Fred, with a healthy OG, this Raptor team wins this series. Now, obviously, it's a, it's a coin flip. Anybody saying so Sixers in 5, Raptors in 5, 
I love Raptor fans, and I love to see the Raptors winning in five games, but I just do not see that happening. This team, this is going to be, as Nick Nurse said in his, in his press conference, it's going to be a slugfest. And it really, really is. Two damn good teams that don't really like each other going up in round one against each other. Yeah, good luck with that. Good luck at that going only going five games. Now, if it does, then hey, it is what it is, but I just don't see it. All right? And obviously, the Raptors bench, I think, is... It's definitely got the more activity. You know, we talk about the rebounding category. Well, look at Chris Boucher and Precious Chua. We all know how those guys crash the glass like, like it's going out of style. And especially guys like Chris Boucher, who has really evolved as a player this season. Those two guys are going to be massive pieces to this team. Obviously, after that first unit, you know, leaves the game or, or if things aren't working later in the series, you need to start one of those guys. They got to be massive impacts. Now, obviously, we've seen Precious. I believe it was in that Philly game where he does a pull-up from three. If he's knocking down his three, good luck. Now, you don't really know what you're going to get from Precious, though, on any given night. You know you're going to get energy. That's for, that's for certain. And you know you're going to get defensive intensity from Precious. And they had Precious all over Joel Embiid in the last game. So it's going to be interesting to see if they start with Precious. But I, I would guess not. I'm going to guess they're going with their other five. Fred, OG, Scotty, Gary, and Pascal. I'm guessing that's going to be the five. And maybe some quick changes early on. But for Precious and... and, and and, uh, and Chris, I think it's going to be a massive series for those guys. They got to, if they can make a massive impact the way we've seen over the last second half of this season, again, a very good chance the Raptors take this series. You know, and I think a, a big, a big tilting factor for the Toronto Raptors, and look, they don't actually play on the court, but I think it's a huge piece, is Nick Nurse and Doc Rivers. We obviously know Nick Nurse is the wizard. We all know Nick Nurse throws anything and everything at an opposing team. We also know, though, that Doc Rivers historically is known for not being able to think on the fly very well. Not very good at in-game adjustments. Philly fans have probably lost their mind this season watching that. Hell, watching the Raptors play the 76ers and watching one of the Raptors torch them like Pascal and nothing, nothing changed throughout the game. I mean, it's a, it's a real X factor because the Toronto Raptors, they, they want to see uh, Joel Embiid's going up. That's fine. Nick Nurse will switch things around and put like three bigs on him, and that would just change everything. He might free up some other guys, but you're not letting that guy who's burning you burn you again. Whereas Doc, he's stuck in his ways. And I've heard a lot of that from Sixer fans. I've, I've read a lot of things on Sixers pages, and that's really a big thing with Doc is that he, he's not very good at that. He's historically not been very good at that. Whereas Nick Nurse is the complete opposite. I think that's going to be a lot bigger, a, a much bigger factor than we than we truly believe this series. It, it's going to be crazy. Now, let's quickly before I wrap this thing up here and ask your guys' predictions and my, and my little predictions. Let's 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 talk about the series. All right, Game One, six p.m. on Saturday in Philly. Game Two goes on Monday. It's a seven thirty tip off in Philly. Game Three back in Toronto. It's an eight p.m. tip off at pri prime time game in Toronto. All right, I'm 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 down for that. Eight p.m. on Wednesday, Saturday, two p.m. afternoon game on Saturday in Toronto. That's Game Four, and obviously five, six, and seven are to be determined once we wait and see what happens uh, throughout the first four games of this series. Now, my predictions. I'm going to give you guys this. I wouldn't say it's a full on prediction because I it's a legit coin flip to me. Because so much, these teams are totally, really, really good in so many different ways. Like, Philly's really good in this, or the Raptors aren't, but the Raptors are really good in this, and the Phillies aren't. So, I don't know what's going to happen. My take is this. If the Raptors are going to win this series, it's going to be in six. But if Philly's going to win this, it's in seven. I don't think it's going to go five. I think if it gets to game six, it's going to be in Toronto. And with the back against the wall, I don't think this Raptor team would lose that game at home. I, obviously, I don't know. So if you win that game and you're in a state where you had to go back to Philly for Game 7, I just, in Philly for Game 7, is just a really tough atmosphere. However, if it gets to a point where the Raptors can eliminate Philly in 6 at home, I think they do it. That's just my take. If it goes 7 and Philly's got it, if it goes 6, Raptors got it. That's my take. That, that, that's how I think Philly's going to win it. That's how I think the Raptors are going to win it. I don't think it's going to go 5. I think it's going to go longer than that. And those are my discrepancies in that. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one because I want to hear all your thoughts in the comments below. Hit that like button if you guys enjoyed this one and are jacked up for round one of the NBA playoffs starting tomorrow night in Philly. Smack that like button. I do appreciate that, guys. Hit the subscribe button. You guys are not already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. No, not the game. The video. The preview. All that stuff. Let me know in the comments below everything your thoughts. 
on the series, what your expectations, your X factors, your prediction for the series, everything. Go crazy in the comments below on what the Raptors need to do to take out Philly in this series. All right. Twitter link is down below. So follow up. Send me a DM to that great stuff. The Instagram link is also down below. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys. Uh, Jay's edition tonight as they're hosting the Oakland A's at Scotia. Mm -hmm. At Rogers Center, Ross Stripling gets the ball for the Blue Jays against Dalton Jeffries of the Oakland A's. 7.07 first pitch. I'll be at that game, so that video will be uploaded later than usual. As for the Toronto Maple Leafs, though, they play on Saturday in Ottawa, taking on the Sens. I believe it's a 7 o'clock puck drop there, honestly, with the Raptor game going on. Not a lot of people paying attention to that, and I understand it. And as for the Toronto Raptors, here we go, Raptor fans. The first time we've seen playoff basketball in with a full house in meaningful games since 2019. Raptors, 76ers, game one of round one of the Eastern Conference playoffs and the NBA playoffs goes in Philly tomorrow night at six o'clock. All right. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and are jacked up for round one starting tomorrow night. We'll talk to you guys then.